bridge to swing wildly, forcing commuters to run for their lives. We're watching steel and concrete half a mile long, twisting 20 times a minute. When caught on camera, watch out continues. It may look like special effects from an old Hollywood movie, but this is real. A massive steel and concrete bridge sways and buckles, leaving commuters desperate to escape before it collapses. It was breathtaking. It was frightening. November 7th, 1940, Tacoma, Washington. It's a blustery day in Puget Sound, located in the northwest section of the Evergreen State. Winds are gusting a little more than 40 miles per hour, causing the Tacoma Narrows Bridge to really sway. Surprising as it looks, the movement doesn't stop cars and pedestrians from crossing it. Ever since the bridge's opening four months earlier, residents affectionately call her Galloping Gertie because of the way she dances and snakes in the wind. Bridges are designed to move a little, but Gertie's movements seem a bit extreme. For some residents, crossing her is like an adventure. It was a thrill. It was uh, like a carnival ride, almost a roller coaster. Historian and author Richard Hobbs writes about the Tacoma Narrows Bridge in his book, Catastrophe to Triumph. People would come out on a windy day when there was extra bounce in the bridge and walk across. The motion could be fairly dramatic. But some find that wave-like motion harrowing. As you drove across the bridge, you could look ahead and the car in front of you, maybe a hundred yards, would absolutely disappear as it went down to the bottom of one of these troughs. It was unnerving to a lot of drivers. Many who crossed the bridge swore it would be the last time. And on that windy autumn day in 1940, it is the last time anyone crosses that bridge. About 10 o'clock, the bridge began to move in ways that it not moved before. The undulations became higher, and the ripples across the bridge were verging on dangers. At about 10.15 a.m., one of the bands holding the suspension cable breaks, causing the bridge to move not only up and down, but back and forth. Once that started, the bridge in increasingly began to twist. There was a car that had been trapped out on the bridge, a car driven by Leonard Coatsworth, a Tacoma Tribune editor, who was headed over to his summer cottage in the Gig Harbor area. In the back seat was his daughter's dog, Tubby. So as the bridge began to twist, it was impossible to drive. Coatsworth tries to get out of the car, but he can't open the door, so he crawls out of the window and tries unsuccessfully to walk on the bridge. He didn't get very far before he realized that the situation was so dangerous, he might not get back, and he better go back for Tubby. But the bridge twists and writhes so violently, he can't safely go back for the dog. He was continually being thrown to the pavement and staggering off to one side and another, virtually crawling part of the way to the safety of the East Tower. Another person trying to escape from the bridge that day is Professor Bert Farquharson. Professor Bert Farquharson was a professor of engineering at the University of Washington, and he was an authority on bridge structures. So when Clark Eldridge and Lacey Murrow at the Washington State Highway Department became concerned about how much this bridge might move, they hired Bert Farquharson to conduct some studies. As part of his study, Farquharson sets up film cameras a few weeks after the bridge opens to record its movement. Several weeks later, those same cameras capture the drama of the bridge's final moments as they unfold. The phenomenal thing is we're watching steel and concrete half a mile long, twisting 20 times a minute. As the twisting increased, light poles 
began to not only dance back and forth, but to snap off the suspender cables that went from the bridge deck to the main suspension cable itself began to snap. And then the unimaginable happens. The massive steel structure bends, whips, and contorts so violently that it collapses into the rushing water below. Both Barquison and Coatsworth make it off the bridge alive, but not Tubby. He's still in the back seat of the Studebaker when the structure gives way. The bridge failure makes news all across the world. The Tacoma Narrows Bridge, dedicated in 1940, was the pride of the Northwest. Four months after it was opened, those winds sent the bridge into a rhythmic dance of death. It literally shook itself to pieces. Very early in the process, in fact, before construction began, the lead engineer was very concerned about the bridge. So he began to help initiate studies by Professor Bert Farquharson at the University of Washington that began to closely examine the bridge's movements. Remedies are attempted before and after the bridge opens. They added uh, cable tie-downs at each end of the bridge on the approach spans. They did a good job of holding the approach spans in place, but the rest of the bridge across the center span still moved a lot. Professor Farquharson also issues an in-depth bridge study and presents two more options to stabilize the bridge just five days before Gertie collapses. But they never get the chance to implement those plans. Tim Moore, senior structural engineer for Washington's Department of Transportation, says the cause of the collapse was torsional flutter or aerodynamic instability. That was the device that took the bridge down. This was a condition uh, that uh, no structure can maintain for a, a significant uh, period of time. Gertie is replaced by a stronger bridge in 1950, 10 years after the collapse. But a part of it still survives. This is a, the a side span, approach span, this is the original Galloping Gertie's 1940s bridge. You can see the two eight-foot deep plate girders. It's called an open section. Many lessons are learned from Gertie's demise, including how critical aerodynamics are in building suspension bridges. There really wasn't another major suspension bridge built uh, after Galloping Gertie collapsed until its replacement in 1950. And Many of the things that exist on the 1950s bridge are a tribute to better aerodynamic stability. In 2007, a twin bridge is completed. The architectural look of both structures resembles the original Gertie, a tribute to her grace and elegance. So that new bridge, as well as others that have been constructed since 1940, are part of Galloping Gertie's legacy. 